What's up, Outer Banks, and welcome to a new episode of OBX ETV, where we give you the inside scoop on what's happening in the local and regional entertainment world. I'm Sue Arts. First up, I'm going to tell you about some of the top stories trending right now at obxentertainment.com. The Destination America series, Buying the Beach, recently filmed an episode on the Outer Banks featuring a local realtor helping a family find their dream home. The episode premieres on June 9th on the Destination America Network. July 4th fireworks will return to Kill Devil Hills this year with an Independence Day Spectacular to be launched from Avalon Pier for the first time in four years. Elsewhere, Nags Head and Manio will also light up the sky on this 4th of July. The Charlotte Children's Theater presents Hansel and Gretel this month at Roanoke Island Festival Park. You can see the production live at 10.30 a.m. on June 18th, 19th, and 20th. You can get full details on each of these stories, plus our review of Maleficent and lots more right now at obxentertainment.com. For over 75 years, Jeanette's Pier has been one of the most popular and recognizable landmarks on the Outer Banks. Built in 1939, it's the oldest fishing pier on the Outer Banks, a piece of local history and a symbol of Nags Head. Ever since it was purchased by the North Carolina Aquarium and was given the ultimate renovation, the future has never looked brighter at Jeanette's. We're excited to welcome today's special guest, the manager of Jeanette's Pier, Mr. Mike Remich. Hey Mike, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Sue. It's a pleasure to be here. So uh, for anyone who doesn't know, can you tell us a little bit about the history of Jeanette's Pier? Oh uh, sure. Well, as you mentioned, it was the original fishing pier in the Outer Banks. It was built in 1939 by the Jeanette family. Uh, they were from Elizabeth City and they had a fruit company. And they are still in existence right now as Jeanette Brothers Food Service Company. Um, the original idea for the pier came from uh, Jeanette family visits to Curie Beach, where there was already an existing pier, and uh, due to the triangle wreck you all may be familiar with off of uh, Second Street mm -hmm. in Kill Devil Hills. Um, when that wreck went down, the deck of the ship actually sat above the water, and some ingenious fishermen decided to row out to the deck of the ship, and they realized they were catching way more fish out there than they were from the beach. So when the Jeanette family heard about this and realized what was going on, they purchased the property um, and decided to build a fishing pier. Ironically, they didn't use the right materials, so it actually fell into the ocean within three years. They didn't use treated lumber. Um, after World War II, they rebuilt. And after a series of decades uh, with the pier being damaged by storms or knocked down periodically, they kept rebuilding and rebuilding, um, and finally sold the business in the 70s. And uh, the aquariums stepped in in uh, 2002 and they actually purchased the property from the owner at the time who was about to turn the, uh, the whole place into condos. Uh. Um, the, local, uh, the, the locals in Nags Head uh, and Dare County um, kind of reached out to the politicians locally and they reached out to the politicians in uh, Raleigh and there was a plan put together um, to purchase the property um, by the North Carolina Aquarium Society which is our nonprofit friends group. Um, they followed through, they received a grant to do that, and they purchased the property in 2002. Um, and fortunately for me, I was hired to run the facility starting in 2003. And we opened to, to you know, a, a really nice business. We were going to add some educational programs, which is what the aquariums are known for. And we, we started that process, and we did a fairly good job the first year. And then in uh, September of 2003, you all will remember, I'm sure, mm -hmm. Hurricane Isabel came through yeah. and basically wiped the whole pier off the map and left us with a pier house and a porch. Yeah. <laughs> and we continued to operate the business for two more years and expanded um, our educational offerings, added some exhibits to the facility, including uh, five aquariums, a series of giant fish mounts that replicated uh, all the saltwater fishing records from the state. And we uh, kind of limped along for a couple years, but 
unfortunately you can't run a fishing pier without an actual pier. Right. It's just not financially feasible. So um, the North Carolina Aquarium stepped in after that. The North Carolina Aquarium Society, Society donated the property to the state. And you have what we have now, which is a $25 million state-of-the-art platinum lead certified facility that is open for public fishing. And we've thrown the educational programs and a lot of other elements back into it. So. Well, cool. so this time uh, they made it out of concrete, didn't they? Absolutely. It's actually kind of built like a bridge. So uh, the bridge, um, the, when you when you come across the Currituck Sound into Kitty Hawk from Currituck County, it's built very similar to that and very similar to the Johnny Mercer Pier, which you may be familiar with in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. So it's a series of concrete pilings and concrete cross beams. And then we still have, uh, we, we wanted to stick with the old feel of a, an old fishing pier. So the whole thing is decked and railed with North Carolina yellow pine. So it's still a wood deck and wood railings, and it feels like an old pier, except for it doesn't sway in the right. surf. So. so that one's probably not going anywhere, we hope. No, absolutely not. It's been engineered to be around for 75 to 100 years. Wow, that's awesome. So yeah, so that, and that was the idea. Um, you know, the, the thought behind it all was, sooner or later, all the old fishing piers are going to disappear. I mean, it's inevitable. The property values are rising. It's, it makes sense for the owners eventually maybe to sell out. It's very unlikely that somebody's going to want to continue to run an old wooden fishing pier because they do suffer mm -hmm. every 10 years or so. Yeah. And um, we knew that it was an integral part of the culture of the Outer Banks. So the idea was to maintain that. And it's not just an part of the Outer Banks culture, it's part of the culture of the state of North Carolina. So um, that was the idea, was to build this pier and make sure that the, it's sort of a legacy to the citizens of North Carolina. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, Obviously, the Outer Banks has changed in many ways since the pier was first built, um, and you've been manager for a long time. Uh, so, can you tell us about any of the other changes and growth in the area since you started your career? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, one thing that um, we've noticed with the reconstruction uh, of the new pier is that it's kind of really revitalized the whole Whalebone Junction section of Mags Head. Not that it wasn't a vibrant section of the town anyway, but um, it, we came to realize how m much the businesses in that general area relied on the pier to attract visitors. And then once they were at the pier, you know, our, our not only our employees, but employees in the past have always been um, information centers. Mm -hmm. So people come in and say, hey, where do I eat? Uh, yeah. We have fantastic restaurant, Sam and Omi's right across the street. Or if you just want a sub or a sandwich, go to Cahoon's next door, or go down to Fat Boy's for an ice cream, or go to Owen's for a fine dinner, you know, or if you want just a snack at 7-Eleven, you can run down mm -hmm. there. So it's real, the hotels in the area, all the rental accommodations in the area, and all the restaurants in the area really relied on the draw that the pier created. And what we've seen is a uh, business is booming everywhere in that area, and we're really happy to be a part of that, and we have a, a really good working relationship with all the businesses. That's great. I know when I used to live in Manio, that was the spot that all the locals go to, too, because it's kind of the closest, biggest parking access. Absolutely. And Absolutely. And that's one thing we're also very proud of is even though the pier was rebuilt um, and, you know, a, a lot of the other piers, their parking lots are exclusive to the business. We are a CAMA public beach access. That was part of the deal. Dare County and Nags had both contributed to the purchase of the property originally. So um, part of the deal from the beginning is we would maintain it as a public beach access. And that's why we have that really nice bathhouse that we mm -hmm. installed when the construction was done um, with sh outdoor showers and restrooms for everyone. Um, and we still see ourselves as the main beach access for Roanoke Island and the surrounding area of Nags Head. Yeah, and that's really good. So anybody can park in that parking lot. You don't just have to be going to the pier. No, absolutely. Any Anybody can park in the parking lot at any time. Uh, we do have certain areas that we sometimes set aside for our wedding guests when we do events and things out there. But no, it's a public beach access just like any other. That's good for people to know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Please come enjoy the pier. Yeah. Um, and now the aquarium's offering all kinds of like cool educational programs at the pier. So what can people find when they visit the pier today? Well, um, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, one of the things that uh, the aquarium's best known for is uh, their educational programs and just being a resource to the public. So we really, being that we are you know, uh, part of the aquariums division with the state um, and being that we have this oceanfront presence, we thought we had a really unique opportunity to uh, offer marine education programs, but also um, programs on conservation, sustainability, renewable energy because of our wind turbines mm -hmm. and our solar panels and things like that. Um, 
And we also, you know, the fact that we can bring students, adults and kids, right down onto the beach or out onto the pier and they can interact with the wildlife um, is just a unique, uh, unique opportunity for us. And we're really excited about how well our education programs and our education department is doing. They really are um, the heart and soul of the pier. Um, and we find that our summer camps sell out in 12 minutes every spring. Um, those are our week-long summer camps that the local kids usually attend. Um, we get uh, advanced bookings on almost all of our day camps and almost all of our classes that we offer. And, uh, and we, um, in the off-season, we bring in large groups, uh, school groups, uh, field trips, basically from all over the state, sometimes 150, 180 kids at a time that we cycle through a series of programs, and they absolutely love it. And all of them get an opportunity to fish while they're there, too. So That's really neat. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. And uh, of course, Jeanette's Pier is the site of a lot of other great events through the year. I know we just covered the EVP Pro Volleyball Tournament last weekend, and uh, the annual Outer Banks Pro Surfing Contest is Labor Day weekend. Yes. yes. Is there any other events happening? Actually, we have a ton of events. Yeah, the, um, the Beach Volleyball Tournament, this is the second year they've mm -hmm. come to visit our shores, and uh, it's grown in the last two years, so that's fantastic. Um, coming up very soon, we have our own in-house Jeanette's Family Fishing Tournament. That's Saturday, June 14th this year from 7 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. You can uh, sign up online or call the pier to register. But the very next day, which is Father's Day, um, Outer Banks Sporting Events is holding their Storm the Beach obstacle course race on the pier starting at Jeanette's. Um, further down the line, we have local and regional surf contests on most weekends in the summer. Um, we also have, as you mentioned, the WRV Outer Banks Pro Surf Contest over Labor Day weekend. And then in the middle of September for an entire week, we uh, have become the new host site for the uh, Eastern Surfing Association's Eastern Championships every year. They used to be at the Lighthouse in Buxton for years. Um, and they were having some problems down there, so they, uh, they moved up uh, and have uh, started hosting the tournament at Jeanette's Pier every year. So we're looking forward to all of those as well. Wow. Um, and all of this information is on your website if people Absolutely. want in the day camps and the uh programs for the kids too they can yes absolutely you can always go to our website it's www.jeanettespeer.net um, we have a list of all of our programs day camps and classes you can sign up online if you'd like or you can always call the peer at 255-1501 and uh, our receptionist or our folks at the front desk can answer all, any question you have great well, sounds like there's a lot going on this summer, Jeanette's, and uh, we just have one more question for you. Sure, absolutely. I know you're very busy, but what's your ideal way to spend a day off on the Outer Banks? A day off? <laughs> um, yeah, that, we were laughing about that earlier yeah. because, uh, as most people know, in the summertime here, you don't get too many days right. off. But, no, our favorite thing to do is we have a, uh, a group of family a group of families with children all about the same age as my daughter, and we kind of have a standing beach day every Sunday. Um, if you show up if you want. If you, if you can't make it that day, it's not a big deal. If there's three families there, great. If there's 20 families there, even better. So that's kind of what we like to do. If it's a pretty Sunday, we'll pack the cooler, pack the chairs and the umbrella, all the surfboards, and go, go to the beach and just enjoy the day with everyone. So that's my ideal day. Cool. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming by, and I'm sure we'll be by Jeanette's at some point to check out all the new exhibits. And Absolutely. Jeanette's is actually special to us because that's the first place Matt ever photographed me and oh, fantastic. That's great. And my son when he was three at the time, so uh, we always like going to Jeanette's to pier ourselves. So, well, please come by, and uh, I encourage everybody to at least stop in and see what's going on there because we have a great gift shop. We do have big aquariums in the lobby that you can check out without paying a thing. You can just walk in and check those things out. We have some really nice exhibits in there, so. Please come on by and see us, and uh, if you have a chance, introduce yourself to me. Cool. Sounds great. Thanks again, Mike. Thank you. Well, I'm Sue Arts with OBXE TV and OBXEntertainment.com, and we'll see you next time.